When we first learn about different types of espresso coffee, everything is always neat and tidy. I mean, the cappuccino and flat white go in little cute six ounce, 160 ml cups, while the latte goes in a slightly larger cup or glass, and everything has its place. I mean, perfecto. But let's be real with ourselves. Most people in the English speaking world aren't drinking coffee from traditional cappuccino cups. No, most people are drinking coffee in bigger cups, like the ubiquitous 12 ounce takeaway cup. And that's the thing with these cups. In most cases, if you go and order a 12 ounce latte or a 12 ounce flat white, then you're essentially getting the same thing. Some people will insist that the flat white has less foam, but in both cases, you're getting the same double espresso with somewhere between 250 to 300 grams of steamed milk. A couple of millimeters of foam isn't fundamentally going to change the flavor in cups of this size. Okay, what about the cappuccino? Surely this Italian icon has some special magic all of its own? Sure, there is an official definition for an Italian cappuccino. In fact, it is certified by the Italian Espresso National Institute. Who knew? I won't read you all the rules to make a certified cappuccino, but here is a couple of essentials. It must be made with a single 25 ml shot of espresso extracted from exactly 7 grams of ground coffee. With 100 ml of cow's milk, no alternatives allowed, served in a 160 ml ceramic cup. Again, if we attempt to scale the Italian cappuccino up into the ever popular 12 ounce cup, then we get a drink that is similar to the flat white and the latte, but with more foam and less milk. However, over time, even this difference in the amount of milk has mostly gone away, thanks to another fairly recent invention, latte art. Baristas and customers cannot get enough of pretty designs on their coffee, and as a result, the texture of milk has become thinner over time to accommodate all these intricate designs. The end result is that the 12 ounce cappuccino is now very close, if not identical, to a flat white or a latte in the same size cup except for that little dusting of chocolate that Aussies just love to add. Okay, now I know that there are some places where they make a real effort to differentiate between these drinks through different amounts of foam or by insisting on using different sizes of cups. But my question is this, does it even matter? If we ignore the traditions and the different names, the bigger question then is, does it taste good? And do I enjoy it? The answer for me at least is emphatically yes. Espresso and steam milk can be a really enjoyable way to drink coffee, whatever you would like to call it. In that way, it's a bit like pizza. There are some beautiful, delicious styles of pizza making around the world that are really nothing like the original, authentic Neapolitan pizza, but they are still delicious. So rather than focusing on names or the tradition, what I think is worth focusing on is the ratio of coffee to milk. So if we use our classic 160 ml cup size as a starting point, in a typical setting, I might use a 20 gram ground dose of coffee to brew an espresso weighing 40 grams out. I'll split that into two cups, so I'll have 20 grams of liquid espresso, and then I'm going to add around 120 grams of milk. That will make this a coffee to milk ratio of one to six. If we double that for the bigger cup, then we can use both spouts, which is 40 grams of liquid espresso, and double the milk to 240 grams. Once that milk has expanded, we'll need a cup around 320 mils just over 10 ounces. In theory, if we work out our recipes this way, then both the smaller and the larger coffees should taste exactly the same. So what about our old friend, 12 ounce paper cup? In most settings, we can't really avoid it. So if we don't want the coffee to get weaker, then we're going to need to bump up the dose a little to compensate for the flavor. This time, we'll go for a 22 gram dose and a slightly longer 44 gram extraction and then steam 260 ml of milk, which should then come up to just under the lip, assuming that your 12 ounce cups are actually 12 ounces, and don't even get me started on that one. But until next time, I definitely wanna know, does pineapple belong on pizza? Come at me people, inform my world. Until then, enjoy your coffee and stay stoked.